Now that we've used the web suite to set up Evidence Me how we'd like it, we can switch to looking at the iPad app for Evidence Me. I'm going to first click on the App Store and I'm going to use this to download the app. You'll notice that in the search area, as I start typing Evidence Me, it will auto suggest Evidence Me by Too Simple. By selecting that, I can then choose Get and follow the options to install it onto my iPad. Once you have installed Evidence Me, if you press down on it and drag it into the taskbar at the bottom, it will be easily accessible wherever you are on the iPad. Tapping on Evidence Me will open the app and prompt you to sign in using the details you set up when you activated your account. Click Login to access the app. At this point it will recognise whether you are a teacher or a parent and log you into the correct environment. When you open Evidence Me, it will ask you if it can access the camera. Please click on OK. It will ask you if you'd like to access the microphone. Again, click on OK. You can click on OK to set a pin for the app and that will take you into an area that you can use to set a pin for the app. We recommend that you have a pin on either the app or the iPad for security reasons. Once you have set up Evidence Me, you can tap on it from your home screen, load it up and then select yourself as a previous user of the iPad. If you put a pin in, it will prompt you to input that pin and then it will take you straight to a screen where you can start recording observations. This could be by using the bottom camera button to immediately take a picture, which will then reduce down into the tray at the bottom of the screen. The other icons on this screen are the top one to start creating an observation without a photograph, the second one to access your camera roll and select images or photographs from there. Here I'll select two from Purple Mash and screenshots that I took earlier and click select in the top right. Once I have selected from my camera roll, they will be put straight into an observation that I can then create. The third button down is a video camera and when I tap that it will immediately start recording what I am filming. When I click on stop, it will pop the video down into the tray, a bit like when I used the camera to take some media earlier. This main home screen is called the create screen and you can get back to it by pressing the create button at the bottom at any time. At the bottom of it you'll see this media tray that you can scroll left and right across. If you tap on an image in that tray, it will enable you to create an observation from that image. You'll see on the left underneath the image that you can add a photograph, a video or another piece of media from your gallery at any point. You can tap to edit the date and the time on the right hand side and you can check to enable parent share if you'd like to share that with a parent. Beneath that you'll see several options. The top of these enables you to add the learners. When I tap add learners, I'm presented with Robin's class. Across the top I can click on the menu to change between Robin's class and in this case Ren's class. I tap learners to go back again. I can then select the learners involved in this observation and when I select observation details in the top left it will then tag those learners with that observation. Underneath that I can tap to edit a notes field. These are the ones I could have altered in the administration section of the web suite earlier. Here I can start adding my text. The notes could be typed in using the keypad, or you could use the microphone button to record your notes. Polly and Molly did some great painting, comma. They experimented with mixing colours, full stop. You can then add some next steps comments if you wish. I'm going to click on observation details to go back to the main observation page. Underneath my notes, I can tap add objectives. This will take me to an area in which I can explore the frameworks. I can tap at the top to change the framework, I can tap underneath that to change the category, and underneath that I can also select a level that those children are working at. Here I'm going to select 30 to 50 and 40 to 60 months. When I close this, on the left hand side I'll see all the objectives within that area, expressive arts and designs between 30 to 50 and 40 to 60 months. Under suggestions, I'll see suggestions for objectives that could have been met based on the notes I made in the previous section. I'm going to select these two, explores what happens when they mix colours and chooses particular colours to use for a purpose. When I click back to observation details, it will tag those objectives to this particular observation. The final area to edit is the next steps objectives. If I tap on add next step objectives, I'm taken to a similar area to adding objectives. 
I've now filtered the framework to include the early learning goal in the expressive arts and design area of the early years framework. Underneath that you'll see under the left hand tab I've still got access to all objectives within that area of the framework. If I tap on suggestions I have got shaded the ones I included in the objectives area. I can now if I like select a further objective that would be the next step objective from this observation. I can then tap on observation details to return back to the observation. Change the area and add other objectives if I need to. If you know you have more to do on this observation, you can tag it as draft. With this one, I'm going to mark it as finished. Once you are happy with the observation, you can either tap the create button at the bottom or the observations button at the top to return back to the main create page. At the bottom, you've got a series of menu options. The first one, profiles, takes you to an area where you can view the children's profiles. For this part of the webinar, I'm going to be viewing data in a different school to that I've used previously. The school I used previously was a brand new setup, whereas this school has got some previous data in it, so we'll be able to see what the reporting area looks like. You'll see on the left hand side I've got a list of classes, and I can tap on the class to view the children in the class. Once I am looking at the children in the class, I can tap on a child and view that child's progress. At the top I've got some information about the child and below this, under assessments, I can see the different areas of the framework and where that child sits within that area of the framework. If I click on 40 to 60 exceeding next to communication and language, I'm taken to view the observations in that area and I can scroll across to look at these. And underneath that you'll see I've got two areas, start of the year 2019 and autumn 1. You'll see here the smiley faces. I can tap in an area and pop a smiley face where I think that child was at the beginning of the year and then the smiley face at the top to show where they are part of the way through the year. If I click on apply, that will update the progress. As the children make progress, you can come back here and move the smiley face. Just underneath the assessments banner to the right, I can see the word filter. And I've got three filters switched on, early years, 40 to 60 months between an assessment period. I can use these drop downs if I want to, to change the filters. The other thing you've got in the learner profile it's just a list of the recent observations if you'd like to browse them. I'm going to go back to the profile screen. Another thing you can do with the profile screen is click edit to the top right. This allows you to edit children within the classes. So if you have a new learner, you can tap add and pop the details in on the iPad. We learned earlier how you can do it in the web suite and you can do it in both places. The other thing you can do if you look on the left is you can click on the plus to add a class. You can add a class or a group using the tabs across the top. Again, you just pop in the name and the description, or with the group, you choose which class the group is within. Once you have finished editing the learners and classes, click Done towards the top right to return to the Profiles area. The next menu item you've got along the bottom of the screen is Observations. When you tap on Observations, you can see all of your recent observations, and you can scroll down. To the top right you'll see an item saying filter. If you tap filter you can enter a start and end date, who the observation was observed by and then filter by class, learner or learner tag. You can also sort by different areas of the framework. You can see here that I have filtered by learners Molly and Polly within all classes and all my observations this week. If I tap back to observations now it should just filter that one observation that we created earlier. You can tap back into any observation to make any edits you wish. Along the bottom then, we've had a look at profiles, observations and the create button that takes you back to the main page. Our fourth option along here is reports. This will take you to an area in which you can click on a button to visit the reporting centre. We'll have a look at the reporting centre in more detail in the web suite in a moment. The final option along here is settings. Many of the settings in here are technical and as a day-to-day -day user, there are many you won't use. However, you might want to change or turn off your PIN code, you might want to change your device name, switch user, or log out. This brings us to the end of exploring the app, so we're going to jump back into the web suite to look at reporting and assessments.